All right, guys, in this video, we are going to talk about systems that are pulled. And I'm literally holding my infant son while I make this. So if you hear weird little noises, that's just Calvin. He's having a great time. So here we have two boxes, M1 and M2. And let's make up some mass. Let's say M1 is 2 kilograms. And M2 is 3 kilograms. Then for this problem, I'm going to say that that external force is 200 newtons. And you are asked to find what the tension is between the two blocks. Well, to find that tension, I'm going to kind of draw it here. Remember that the tension is pulling M1 to the right. And that same tension is going to tug back on M2 to the left. So that's a force pair, like a third law action-reaction pair. Um, and to make this you know, kind of easy, I'm going to remember this is thing one. This is thing two. Sometimes we call them A and B. I'm just doing one and two to kind of change it up. If I draw a figure body diagram for one, I'm going to have M1G down, call this N1, and M2G down, call this N2. Okay, so now let's talk about that F. This thing that's pulling on the system is only going to be applied to the second block, so you would draw that external force F there. You would not draw it on thing one. Instead, you would draw a slight tension to the right that's pulling block one and block two is being pulled to the left with that exact same tension. So I'm going to mark them congruent. So I remember they're the same force. Also, for all of these problems, there's no friction. OK, so if I want to find the tension between the two, um, there are a couple of things that I can do. Uh, the first thing that I would probably try to do is use the combined mass of the system and the external force on that whole system. And I would find the acceleration by taking the net force over the total mass. In this case, I would use the 200 newtons and a mass of 5 kilograms, treat it like one big thing, and get an acceleration of, what is that, 40? I haven't slept in two days, so I might be wrong. Okay, so once you have that acceleration, give me one second. Okay, so with that acceleration, I can figure out what the tension is. Um, I could write an equation of net force for one. It would just be tension because there's no other forces acting on it. Or I could write an equation of net force for two, which would be F minus t. Okay, now either of these net forces I can find because I know what the mass of each thing is. And I know what the acceleration that they both have is. So for the net force on one, it would be two kilograms times 40 meters a second squared. So 80 newtons. And then for the net force on the second block, it would be 3 times 40, or 120 newtons. I'm sorry, that should say M2. OK, so now I can use either of these to solve for the tension. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward that the net force on the first block, 80 newtons, is the tension. Which works if I plug that back into this equation, because if I do 200 newtons, the external force, minus that tension that I just found, 80, then it gives me 120, which is the net force on 2. Okay, sometimes you'll see this done with like a, a series of boxes that are being pulled up. Now in this case, I have them labeled 2 kilograms and 1 kilogram. I'm going to go ahead and call this one A and this one B. And then I'm going to draw free body diagrams for A and B. So here's A. It's going to have some tension down, which I'm actually going to call this T. And even though this says there's a tension, like there's another rope above this, I might just go ahead and call that an external force and label that external force on the two kilogram block. Now the other thing that's going to be acting on this is the weight force, which I would call this MAG. And then there would be weight force here. I'll call that M 
BG. So to draw that wave force going down, I would say MAG. And then for B, I would have tension going up, which again, these tension forces are equal. And then a small weight force, MBG, going down. All right, now let's say in this problem that you knew the external force was, oh, I don't know, 100 newtons. And you were asked to find the acceleration and then the tension between the two blocks. Well, what I would do first is I would, actually, let's go back for a second. The net force would not be 100 newtons, sorry. Because if I was going to draw this whole system, which I can kind of redraw uh, off to the side, you would actually have that force F going up um, and then a combined mass of 3 kilograms going down, which would mean you would have a weight of, well, we'll just call that mg, but 30 newtons. So to get the acceleration, you would say that the uh, net force over the mass is 70 newtons over 3 kilograms. That's the acceleration. So 23.3 meters per second squared. Okay, so now if I want to figure out um, from either of these net force equations what the tension is, I can just start plugging things in. Um, I can find the net force acting on B with that acceleration of 1 kilogram times 23.3. Again, sorry for that confusion. So 23.3 newtons, nothing too crazy there. Um, and then when I plug that in here, I would get 23. Actually, I'll rearrange to solve for tension first. Then it force on B plus the weight. I would get 23.3, that's B, newtons plus, um, and in this case, the weight would be 1 kilogram times 10. So 10. There you go, 10 newtons, so 33.3 newtons, that's the tension. If I wanted to plug that back into here and verify, then I could. All right, let's do one more problem where we have three boxes that are being pulled by two separate ropes. Um, I'm going to label one A, the other B, and the other C. Then I'm going to think about the tension in these two ropes. And since there are two ropes, I'm going to call the tension in the first rope 1, and the tension in the second rope 2. Wild stuff. Okay, so when I draw free body diagrams for A, B, and C, each of them is going to have a weight and a normal force. Call that MAG, MBG. So that should be a little bit bigger, but whatever. MCG, and then the normal force, call it MC. NB, and A. And then I'm going to draw these forces. This external force, whatever is pulling this system of blocks, is only pulling on that block to the right, so the C block. So I can only draw F on that free body diagram. Okay, then the thing that's pulling block B to the right is that other rope that has tension T2, and that same tension resists or it tugs back on C as these things are. Let's just go ahead and say we know that it's starting from rest and it moves to the right and accelerates to the right. Okay, so I know that that tension, um, they're equal. Since I called it T2, I'll use two congruent marks. Um, and then T1 is what pulls block A, the tension in that first rope and also what slows down block B. So I'm going to give congruent marks for that. Now, from each of these free body diagrams, I can get an equation for net force. For A, I have T1. For B, I have T2 minus T1. And for C, I have F minus T2. 
So now I can kind of work with the first equation because I know that the net force on A is the mass of A times the acceleration. Um, and this is where I can find the acceleration by thinking about, since there's no friction on any of these blocks, we'll say no friction, then basically this external force is applied to a big four kilogram block with no friction resisting it. So you can say that the acceleration is the net force over that mass. So, um, oh, I have to give you a force. Let's say that this force is, how about, ooh, let's do 200 newtons again. Okay, so 200 newtons over a total mass of four kilograms gives you 50. These are really fast accelerations, uh, meters per second squared. So to find the net force on A, I have the mass of A, which is one kilogram times 50 meters a second squared, which is 50 newtons. Okay, so that tells me that the tension of the first rope is 50 newtons. Okay, now I can use either of these next two net force equations to find T2. Um, let's go ahead and use this one right here to figure out what the net force on B is. I do the mass of B times the acceleration or two kilograms times 50 meters a second squared, which gives me 100. Um, and so to figure out what T2 is, I would take the net force on B and add T1 to it, which would be 100 newtons plus 50 newtons. So T2 is 50 newtons. Well, I guess I can just write right here. T2 is 50 newtons. And if I want to take my net force C equation to prove that this is correct, remember F minus T2. Well, I know that the net force on C is the mass of C times the acceleration. So one kilogram times 50 meters a second squared is 50 newtons, and then I think, okay, does 200 newtons minus T2 is, sorry, that's 150, 150 equal 50 newtons. <gasps> it does, so it checks out. Smiley face. Congratulations. I don't know where my cat is, so this is the end of the video. He says bye. Say goodbye, buddy. <laughs> Help me.